heard about rum, we heard about whiskey, but let's hear it for beer. I don't know, by a round of applause, it's pretty good. So when I, when I was young, I was in high school, that allure of beer was just, everybody goes out, you know, fake IDs, and they try to go to the Circle Ks, but I'm kind of a geek. So I, I looked at and started doing research, and this is before Wikipedia, so it's kind of hard. I figured out the four key ingredients of beer were kind of your, your wheat and your hops and your water, and uh, wait, wheat, hops, water, grain, all the good stuff up there. And uh, I kind of said, you know what, if I got all this stuff, I could probably make my own beer. So I'm in high school, I, I get on my bike, and I, I basically go out to a homebrew supply store. And I fill up my pail with uh, all the different grains and hops and yeast and, and all the good stuff. And I walk up to the guy with the big handlebar mustache, and he's like, hmm, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so a few months pass by, I get my parents' permission, and finally I end up going out and I started home brewing my own beer. And uh, I've been doing it for about 15, 20 years. Um, really exciting hobby. I would urge any of you guys to get out and give it a shot. Um, but I have a passion for one of those key ingredients and that's hops. Yeah! <laughs> so if you like IPAs, you're big into hops. And tonight what I really want to talk about are a little bit about where they come from, how they're grown, how they're used, and uh, take you along kind of a voyage where we went up to Washington to one of the hop farms, went to distributors, and actually brewed some beer with fresh hops. Now if you're not familiar with hops and how they contribute to beer flavor, it's mostly your, your citrusy, your flowery, flowery kind of overtones, your piney tastes, that's the, the really good stuff that I really enjoy drinking beer. I mean, you can almost, just like people talk about wine and other things, you can get those same things from hops. Those all come from kind of the uh, resins and the oils that are in the, the hop cone. Um, little known thing, hops are actually in the same family as marijuana. <laughs> don't, don't try smoking hops, it doesn't really work. I, I, I tried it once. But uh, um, hops really come up from Washington, and uh, we were uh, very lucky to visit Loftus Farms, which is in Yakima, Washington, and they have about 400 acres, and there's these trellises that are kind of Y-shaped, and they go up for about 20, 20 feet in the air, and over the entire year, they'll grow up, and they'll harvest it once a year, and they'll bring it back into a big processing center, big mechanical thing, probably like a 10,000 square foot warehouse, where they separate the cones from the actual vines. And once the cones are separated and the cones have the, all the good resins and stuff, they're put into like kind of football field sized dryers where they blow just super hot air up underneath them to dry them out. Um, the reason they do that is, is it's just like a vegetable or any fruit. Um, after about a week or so, it starts to go stale. But if they dry them out, they can bale them up and ship them all across the world so beer makers and beer lovers like you can drink it year round and it preserves it, a, a hot bale can last maybe one or two years um, before you use it. So really, really exciting stuff. Now, once the farmer is done, he passes it over to a distributor. Uh, the distributor kind of ships around the world, and I was happy to visit Hop Union, which is where most of the craft brews around the United States get their, their high quality hops. But other than the distribution type stuff, they also have laboratories where they actually test and create a whole bunch of like, almost like a technical spec on um, each different harvest of hops. Now this goes out to the craft brewers so they can perfect their recipes, know how much, how little, when to add it to the boil and all that good stuff. And then the magic happens. The hop gets into the boil. Um, during the beer, uh, beer making process, the hops are added in. And depending on how long you, or little you boil it, how, what types of hops and how you blend them and mix them, it, contributes, it, it contributes amazing different flavors all across the board to the beers that we drink. And I mean, a testament to that is there's thousands and thousands of different types of beers out there, and hops is the main thing, or one of the main things other than the grain manipulation that they can do that contributes to the just diversity that we have in beer. So tonight, I have a challenge for you guys. Go ahead and go out and try to find a wet hopped beer. These are basically beers made with the cones of hops before they're dried out. Go out and try to find, I love Dogfish Head, they make a 60, 90 minute, 120 minute IPA, and go ahead and taste them back to back. Get a feel for the differences in the amount of time that they're boiling the hops with. And for chefs, I, I don't know, I got exposed to this idea of with hop flavored ice cream. It was divine. And so I think <laughs> if you can take a, any dish that has a lot of sweetness, mix it with the bitterness of hops, you might create something pretty, pretty outstanding. And the craft beer lovers out there are gonna love you. <laughs> so um, take out away from today is kind of look at the label, look at the different kinds of uh, hops that are used in the craft beers that you guys are drinking, and really think about and try to start to understand how this one ingredient 
plays in the beers that we drink every day. Thank you.